The sound is sp Bloop boop boop Bloop doop doo Bloop doop da ba Hey, I'm Michael. Thanks for watching my review of Tactics Ogre Reborn. When you watch the opening credits of Tactics Ogre Reborn, you might notice that the voice actors are listed first, even before the director and producer. If you play a bit of the game past that, you can see why Square Enix chose to do it that way. The voice actors are one of the defining bonuses of this game. The characters themselves and the writing that supports them give the actors excellent material to work with. Tactics Ogre Reborn is a tactical RPG developed and published in 2022 by Square Enix for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and 5, and Windows. It was originally developed and released by Quest in 1995 as Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together for the Super Famicom, Sega Saturn, and PlayStation. Square Enix also released a remake of the game for PSP in 2010. The director of the original version of the game was Yasumi Matsuno, who went on to do some combination of writing, directing, or producing for Final Fantasy Tactics, Vagrant Story, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, and Final Fantasy XII once he left Quest for Square. Though Tactics Ogre was the second game in the Ogre Battle series, its gameplay is quite different compared to the original Ogre Battle game. In Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen, you give orders to units on a large map area. When one of your units gets into battle with an enemy unit, the screen will change to a different battle arena where it will move into a turn-based battle, but within this battle, you don't give specific commands to your individual characters in the unit. You give just general tactics and the battle plays out naturally from there. By contrast, in Tactics Ogre, you control individual characters on a much smaller map and you have complete control over them unless they're a guest character. The gameplay of Tactics Ogre is more or less identical to that of Final Fantasy Tactics if you're familiar with that game. The story of Tactics Ogre Let Us Cling Together is incredibly strong. It's complex, with plenty of twists and backstabbing and complicated moral questions. There's a turning point at the end of each of the first three chapters where you have to make a decision that can completely change the plot and recruitable characters in the coming chapter. As I only played through one possible story and I didn't do any side quests, I saw less than half of the game, I'd guess, and I spent over 100 hours playing it. Part of that could be because I'm the type who likes to read all of the information about each character after I meet them, or after their story changes. There's an option in the menu screen of the game between battles where you've got lots that you can read, and I love doing that. Speaking of characters, though, there are a ton. I'm not going to do my usual breakdown of characters into heroes, villains, and NPCs, because depending on which story choices you make, the characters might fall into different camps. A character might canonically die in one branch of the story, but be recruitable in another. A character might be a villain in one story, but an ally in another. And at times, characters move freely between these categories as the story moves on. Though this game is a direct sequel to Ogre Battle, you don't need to play the previous game in order to understand what's happening in this game. It takes place in a different country with its own problems. However, a handful of characters from the previous game do show up in this game, and they tend to be your most overpowered allies. One disappointing thing for me, at least in the storyline that I followed, there are a few villains that you really grow to despise in the course of the game that you don't get to fight yourself. A few are killed by another character in a non-battle event, and a few escape at the end of the game, presumably to set them up for a sequel, which hasn't happened, at least yet. I played Tactics Ogre Reborn on my Switch, so I was expecting the graphics to be beautiful, and they are, but if you look at gameplay footage for the original Super Nintendo version, that is also beautiful. Quest and later Square really outdid themselves for this one. This game looks great. The design is also quite good, but not really exceptional. My gripe with it is that it's pretty expensive 
expected. A few character designs kind of run together and are difficult to tell apart, and some of the battle maps are a little uninspired, but still nothing is bad. Better than not bad is the sound in this game. The bass music from the original SNES game is really good, but the orchestrated and newly recorded music for Tactics Ogre Reborn is phenomenal. It's so great to hear music coming back from the original Ogre Battle game, too. The composers for this game were Hitoshi Sakimoto and Masaharu Iwata. They, too, went with Matsuno to Square for the games he worked on there. And this score is similar to the score for Final Fantasy Tactics and Final Fantasy XII. I think this might be my favorite score of those three, but I might have to reevaluate once I replay those other games. But in comparing this score to my recollection, Tactics Ogre's score is more tuneful, which is really nice when you're in the same battle for 45 minutes at a time. But as I mentioned up top, the voice acting really takes this game over the top to something special. All the actors give incredible performances and their performances help push the game to some really emotional highs and lows. In fact, their performances are so good that it had me noticing things that I've never noticed in a game before. I actually wish the game's sound design had put in some atmospheric sounds during the spoken dialogue, like wind, a flowing stream, maybe the occasional animal sound, just to make it sound like these characters are having their conversations on battlefields, where many conversations in this game take place, instead of in a sound booth. But even with that minor gripe, the sound is the strongest category of this game. Gameplay is, by contrast, the weakest category of this game, but it's still very good. My gripe with it is the difficulty. You know me. I like easy games. I just want to be able to experience the story. This game has permadeath, but it's actually pretty forgiving. When a character falls in battle, you have three turns to revive them before they're gone for good, and that's usually doable. What I would have liked, though, is if there were no level cap. For most of the game, the level cap is not an issue for me. I'd grind up to the cap, and the battles until the cap went up again were doable. But the final boss is such a pain. Normally, when I have as much trouble as I did with that battle, I just leave and grind a bit. But that's not possible when you're at the level cap. But beyond the difficulty, by the end of the game I was getting a bit tired of the battles. The final dungeon is a long stretch of encounters, but even before that started I was a little tired of the battle system. But still, not bad enough for me to give gameplay a low score, just not a top score. So what do the critics think of Tactics Ogre? According to Metacritic, the PSP version of the game gets an 87%. Tactics Ogre Reborn got an 84%. Now onto my thoughts. The Remichael formula using my picky scores gave the game a 93%. I gave the game a heart score of 89%. If you average together those scores, this game gets a 91% or an A-. Here's where the game fits in our ranking. So do I recommend this game? Absolutely. If you're into Final Fantasy Tactics, which feels very similar to this, you should play Tactics Ogre. If you're into tactical JRPGs other than that, you should still play this. If you're just into JRPGs and haven't tried a tactical game before, this might be a good first one. It's pretty easily available, so pick it up. Thanks for watching this review. Uh, please give this video a like if you liked it. Give it a pity like if you didn't like it. If you want to see more of our content, up there is a button that you can click to subscribe to our channel. Over here is another video that YouTube thinks you might like, so you can check that out. We mostly review and discuss media, especially video games and music. And yeah, I think that's about it. Maintain your groovy selves. See y'all soon.